Hello, this is Jeff with the Click Team again, and today we're going to look at some of the new physics based movements in Fusion 2.5. And we're going to make ourselves a little Angry Birds type of game, but of course it's going to be much simpler. So let's see, let's just do a new application. And I'm going to open up frame number one. And let's see, let's add ourselves, let's Let's make our frame look a little bit better by changing this black ground to a bluish color. And let's add ourselves a floor here. So if I insert an object and a background object, this guy right here, just double clicking on him, going to make him a solid black colored ground. All right, so let me make this a little smaller and put it down here. Do, 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 width 640. Okay, that looks pretty good. Move that guy over one. Down one. Let me see what happens when we run this. Okay, and I see our ground down there. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Let me also set this as an obstacle. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is, in our game here, we're going to have a shooter. And the shooter is going to follow a path up and down. So let's see. Let's find ourselves a shooter. And I'm just going to use a standard active object. Put it right about there. That looks good. And I'm just going to double click on this and make sure our action point and the hot spots are right in the middle. And let's give ourselves a path movement on this. And it's hard to see behind that. Okay, that looks about straight. We want to reverse at the end and loop. Okay. Let's run our game right now. All right, we see that going up and down. Of course, you know, you could make this into a cannon and have strength and angle. You could do something more like real Angry Birds where you click it, pull back a slingshot. But we don't want to make the video too long. We just kind of want to demo this. All right, so let's add ourselves a bullet to shoot out of the shooter. And that's just going to be another active object. And let me get rid of it. Zoom in here a little bit. I'm just going to make myself a little red circle. Right about that. Crop it. Make sure these guys are in the center. All right. So there's our bullet. Let's put this off screen. Okay, we're going to give our bullet is also going to be a physics movement. So the first thing we're going to do is add the physics engine to our frame. And it doesn't matter where you put that it, invisible object. I like to put all my invisible objects off screen so they don't mess up my display when I'm designing my games. But if you have this on your frame, it doesn't matter. It won't show up at runtime. But you do need to add this to use the physics movements, and Fusion will prompt you if you don't have it and you try to set an object to a physics movement just to reduce code overhead. All right, so I have our bullet selected, and I'm going to give our bullet a static movement. Just a little warning there that our action spot, hot spot needs to be center of mass. Um, initial direction, we're going to make it shoot out uh, about that angle. And you can see we have different stuff here. I want to set the... Well, we'll just leave it all like this. Go along. Let's make an event to shoot it so we can see how this is doing. And so, keyboard, upon pressing a key, the space key, I want, what do I want to do? I don't actually want to shoot it, even though there are some bullet options in the physics 
movements. I'm just going to actually create an object. That's going to be this guy relative to our shooter guy. Okay. I'm also going to do a little thing here where if the position of active 2 is off the screen, let's destroy it. See how we're doing here now? Well, I don't think that's what we wanted, was it? No, not at all. Let's change our name of the bullet. Let's change this to bullet just so we can remember and everything looks nice. All right, so get back here to the static movement. I think I actually want to do a bouncing ball movement. And I'll give it that angle to kind of shoot out. I want it a little bit kind of droopy out there. Deceleration, I'm going to crank this up a little bit. All right, let's see if that works a little bit better. Kind of, but not really. So let's see. Um, let's crank this speed up to about 120. I'm going to crank down our deceleration. Actually, I think that's a little bit too high for what I want to do here. About 10. All right, let's see how we're looking now. All right, that's looking a little bit better. See how it kind of arcs out there? Not perfect, but, you know, this is just a quick little demo game. All right, so let's start building our tower. And so I'm going to get another active object here. And I'm just going to make this guy look like it's a piece of wood. So let's find a brown color in here. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's make this about 16 and 64. Yep, we need to get it all brown. This little G here is the center of mass. And let's put this guy right here. Okay, I want to give this guy a qualifier group. Let's get over here and go add. That way all of our tests can be done against qualifier groups. I'm just going to drag another one down here from the object shelf. Put it right about there. That looks a little bit too far. Okay, so we need those to stand on the background. So let's go for object good collides with a backdrop. And I'm going to set object good to a stop. Let's make sure we got this right so far. Okay, those are stopped right there. Now I need a top for this guy. So let's get another active object. Let's make it 64 by 32. And let's make it all brown. That looks way too fat. How about 16? How about 8? That looks better. Oop, we need to change this to the center. Okay. And this guy looks too short. So, line him up here. Oop. Stretch him out there. Those legs sure are fat, but what do you do? I guess you can make them smaller, huh? All right, now we haven't added this guy to the qualifier group yet, but let's just run this. And, well, he doesn't have a movement, so of course he doesn't do anything. Um, doo -doo -doo, we didn't give any of these movements, so why did I expect them to go anywhere? Let's give these static. No angle. That one, of course, is a clone, so it's going to just inherit the objects or the properties static no movement no direction runner application you can see our top guy fell off if we add him to the qualifier group you 
can see now he doesn't stay. Ah, well, I need an event for the group good to collide with another object. Group good. And I can just drag and drop the stop down here. Now, all right, that stops. All right, so let's build our tower some more. And I'm just dragging these from the object shelf. <laughs> Still don't know if I like how thick those guys are, but, you know, that's life. Okay. Oop. That's annoying. Uh, this is going to go down one. Everybody's OCD. Got to have everything lined up perfectly. All right, add another top on here. I need to make the boot. Let's make sure we're still doing good. Yep, we got our tower. So we've got a little misalignment there, but I guess I can live with that. Well, what happens if our ball hits it now? Let's see. Yep. That's going to be hard to hit, huh? There we go. Well, nothing happened. Well, we don't have our bullet as part of the qualifier group. Uh, so we can, well, we don't, do we want to add that to it? Uh, let me think. Sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. I should have really changed the angle of my bullet there because it's hard to hit that guy. <laughs> um, let's change that angle. That bothers me. Direction, we'll make it one less. It'd be kind of neat to have multiple directions there. A little bit more random for a game. Do, 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 do. Okay, you can see it hits it. But it's not powerful enough. We can increase its density property. Let's increase it to about... I like nice round numbers too. Another OCD trait. Hit. Boom. All right, so that's working pretty good. Let's build one more level on here. All right, inside this level, I want our little guy that we're trying to destroy another active object here let's make him a green guy and there and how about some nice and oh, this guy's beautiful isn't it let's get rid of that be a static and we also want him to be interact physically make him part of the good all right let's see what happens with that much he turned upside down we need to copy and paste and delete that way Oh, I know what it is. Duh. And now I got this screwed up. All right, let's, hopefully this now he is still not sitting the right way. What the heck? Um, initial direction is down. Let me see if I do none. Okay, I must need it to do none. That's weird. I'll have to look at that a little bit closer. Well, let's see what happens now when we play our game. Mm. 
I should have made those side things pretty darn tough. I'm going to have to. Let's adjust those a little bit. We'll just make our bullet even more density. Okay, I think these might need a little adjustment in there. Make these a little less dense. And we'll also change their elasticity. I'll bring that up a little bit, see what kind of effect this has on it. <laughs> well, that there in a nutshell is just about how easy it is to get started with an active birds physics based type of game of course you can expand this out there are a bunch of properties in the physic engine itself of course objects let's find an object here they have all kinds of physics movements up here and then each one of those has properties. And of course, in your event editor, under your object, there is also a physics menu. So you can adjust any of those properties at runtime. And of course, there's your physics engine. And it also has the ability to have all of its properties adjusted at runtime. So Francois did quite an amazing job putting Box2D into Fusion 2.5 and made it very easy to use. It's basically just as easy to use as any of our built-in movements. And while this was a simple demo, hopefully it showed you that it's easy to use and quite powerful. Thanks a lot. Bye.